you visited in the house tonight, I'm glad to have you with us. Be a part of a church, Solid Rock. If you lost it tonight, be a good night to get saved. Jesus is waiting on you. He'll reach you with open arms. All you got to do is confess. Amen. Good to be in the house of God tonight. I, I, I need prayer, folks, and I'm serious. I, I, I'm serious. I need a lot of prayer. I failed three times this week. I fell this morning, missed four steps going down the basement. Fell in the mud yesterday. Fell off the tractor the day before yesterday. So I, I, I need a lot of prayer. My balance ain't no count. Uh, and it's getting where I ain't moving real good. Of course, I'm getting old. But that, that ought to be a factor, amen? I told Brother Wayne this morning, I'm getting too old to fall all these bones and getting brittle. Amen? amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. 
your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. All I will
Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a round of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Good spirit in the house tonight. Hallelujah, spirit of worship. How many come to worship Jesus? Hallelujah. One thing about it, we can count on Jesus. He is faithful. It doesn't matter the scene. It doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter when I say that. It doesn't matter if you're on the mountain or if you're in the valley. Jesus is faithful. It doesn't matter if you're on your knees in a hard place or you're shouting the victory. Jesus is still the same. He's still faithful. I tell you, I'm so thankful to be a Christian tonight. So thankful I'm sold out to Jesus. How many sold out tonight to the Lord? Hallelujah. I cast my lots with Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to serve him till I die. Hallelujah. Such a good spirit in the house of the Lord tonight, I tell you. So good to see everybody. Once again, let's give Jesus another round of praise tonight. Hallelujah. He's so faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Jean, would you like to sing tonight? Give her a hand clap. Days of your 
praise tonight. Hallelujah. I tell you what, if you don't have salvation, tonight's your night. Hallelujah. What a victory spirit. What a good spirit in the house of the Lord tonight. You all can be seated just for a moment. Hallelujah. At this time, let's make Brother Tim welcome as he comes up front to testify. Give him a hand clap. I just want to thank the good Lord above. Um, last week after all the storms went through, we went down and we checked our pond, and as we came back up to the top of the hill, our vehicle slid off in the mud, and we tried everything we could to get out. Do you know what? Sometimes you forget the thing you're supposed to do first. And, and I stuck boards underneath the tires, and I did this, and I tried that, and Jody was in there slinging mud all over me, and I was trying to push it. I think she enjoyed that part. I really do. But you know... Finally, I just said, we're, we're just making it worse. Let's just stop. And for two days, I sat there and I looked at that truck and I said, how am I going to get that thing out? I don't have a tractor. And then suddenly I said, you know what, Lord? I have never asked you. And that word spoke to me and said, you have not because you asked not. And I said, Father, I'm asking you, help me to get this thing out. And I walked over got the keys, walked over, put them in the ignition, started it up, 
put the truck in four wheel drive low. It did not even spin a tire and backed right out of there. And I said, you know, Lord, thank you for not being mad at me for being ignorant. But I just thank God that even though we, we constantly make the same mistakes again, he still loves us and cares for us so much. Praise the Lord. We'll get, uh, we'll get ready and take up tonight's offering. So as offering takers will make their way to the front, we'll go ahead and get ready to do that. Let's make the Solid Rock Trio welcome. That's Brother Johnny Irvin, Brother Jason Popwell, featuring Pastor Keith. Give him a hand clap tonight. Hallelujah. stand to our feet once again tonight. Let's give our King Jesus one more hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be back in the house of the Lord tonight? Looking forward to what Jesus is going to do in the house tonight. Hallelujah. At this time, help me make welcome our pastor, Brother Keith. Give him a hand clap. tonight. Amen. Amen. Remain standing if it's possible tonight. Amen. Go with me to the book of Isaiah to start with tonight. Amen. Go go into the preaching and amen. God's a mighty good God. Appreciate the goodness of the Lord. Isaiah tonight, chapter 40. I want to start Isaiah chapter 40 tonight for just a moment. 
And this is the performance of the lights. As Brother Tim said a while ago, sometimes we forget. I wanted for my keys. I said, God, I don't put my keys out. I said, you do. And walk right, all of a sudden. Somebody said, well, you, it just comes to your memory. Yes, it did, but I don't know who brought it there. <laughs> Amen. But God is good. Now, it's good to see everybody. Appreciate you being with us tonight. It's good to have the young man for his first time with Cheyenne tonight. Good to have him tonight. He's not been here, but you've not been here before, have you? Amen. It's good to have you tonight. God bless you for being with us tonight. Amen. Give him and the Lord a good hand. Amen. Give him a solid rock, solid rock welcome tonight. Amen. I want to read you a couple scriptures tonight the Lord has shared with me and uh, a couple things that uh, uh, I want to share with you tonight. And, you know, uh, as I said a moment ago, sometimes we all forget. How many believe we all forget? Yeah. And sometimes we just, it's just the human nature, as I said this morning, on, on several things. But I know that God's a mighty good God, and he is merciful. And I am looking for my handkerchief. Somebody shout amen. It's not on me this morning. Ah, there we go. By the grace of God. Amen. I want you to tell your neighbor tonight, don't you know? Now listen to the scripture tonight. Has thou not known and have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creators, I, I, I like to read this very powerfully tonight. The creator of the ends of the earth fadeth not, neither is weary, and there's no searching. He don't have to try to find out where to lay my handkerchief. You see that commercial? That guy's asking where his glasses is at. There's on top of his head. She said they'll turn up. Amen. Next verse. He giveth power to the faint. And them that have no might, he increases strength. Next verse. Even the youth shall faint. And be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, tell your neighbor, when you start trusting God, and just keep going, you're going to make it tonight. How many believes that? Would somebody give God a shout of praise in here tonight? Amen. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Amen. You can be seated tonight. God bless you. Amen. How many knows that? God is everlasting if you don't know, if you don't understand. But there's a God that's still in control tonight of every situation. Can I get a witness in this house tonight? Some of you may have been going through things. You may be fighting something in your body that you just seem you can't shake. There's some kind of a tormenting spirit that seems like, amen, just lingers around you at times. But I want you to know there's still a God that's on your side tonight. And God has a plan for your life. How many believes that? I want you to understand something tonight. God has an ordained plan. Say that with me. God has an ordained plan for my life. Amen. Before you was ever formed in your mother's womb, God laid your life out. He crossed every T and dotted every I that your life would be fulfilled in him. If you walk in the plan and the ways of God, God will work it out. Sometimes it don't under, we don't understand it, but let me tell you something tonight. Amen. When Joseph stopped and asked a man about his brothers, his brother said that he's down, they're down, or Joseph asked about his brother, he said, he's, they're down there. Amen. And Joseph went down there, and there was a pit, and that pit was empty, but amen, you know God still had a plan, and the pit was empty. Those Ishmaelite caravan didn't come to Egypt and going that way just by chance. It was in the plan of God. Joseph was took to Egypt and they sold him uh, and a man by the name of Potiphar bought him, but he was still in the plan of God. It didn't make sense, but God was working a plan. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. And, thir uh, and 13 years later, uh, amen, Joseph sat on the throne, uh, amen, of Egypt with Pharaoh, uh, and he was the mightiest man except for Pharaoh because God had a plan. Uh, amen. It didn't look like it in the pit. Uh, it didn't look like it in the dungeon, uh, but God uh, had a plan. Uh, somebody shout, God has a plan for my life tonight. How many believes that? Amen. How many of God knows that tonight? Regardless of what comes or goes. Amen. 
Now, can you imagine when Ruth came back from the land of Moab, her and Naomi, and they came there. Amen. They just didn't run into Boaz by accident. She didn't go to Boaz's field by accident. It was in the providence of God that God worked it out. I want you to smile tonight and say, God's got my life in control. You may not have it in control, but God does. Oh, I feel a spell coming on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Remember that no one uh, can nullify uh, the plan of God tonight. Uh, Isaiah 59 and 17 says uh, that there's no weapon formed against us uh, can succeed or prosper in the will of God tonight. They may make it. uh, They may throw it at you. But in the end, you're going to come out uh, and shout, look what the Lord uh, has done. Hallelujah. You just cannot be weary in well-doing tonight. And some things weary us. Amen. How many ever been sick long enough that you just got sick of being sick? Now, I'm, not, I'm not saying nothing about your, your problem. But you ever just get sick of whining and telling somebody, I'm still sick. I'm not knocking anybody. I'm talking about Brother Wayne. And after a while you say, I'm tired of this. How many ever done that? Now, please understand me. I'm not knocking or diminishing anything that you're fighting or going through. Amen. Because for the last couple weeks, I battled kidney stones. I I thought this better, and then they'd show up again. Thought I had them devils whooped. Here they come again. But by the grace of God, they're whipped tonight. (laughs) Amen. But I got tired. Somebody, amen. Got tired of just feeling drained and run down. Hello? Amen. And I will say this for every man. Kidney stones are not for wimps. <laughs> they ain't for real men either, I'll tell you that. Somebody, <laughs> oh, there, brother buddy. Amen. Somebody shout, God is good. Amen. In Isaiah 59 and 19, write these scriptures down if you write down. Amen. The Bible says this. When the enemy comes into your life like a flood. How many's ever had the enemy to come into your life like a flood? I mean, it's going to come and devastate everything that's in your life. But God says, with my spirit, I'll lift up a standard. And the devil cannot, amen, overcome the standard of an all. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house tonight to tell somebody, amen, you're on the winning side by the grace of God. Well, give God a shout of praise in here. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a shout of praise. Daniel put up Isaiah 30 or 43 and verse 13. Uh, Isaiah, amen, 43 and 13. Uh, I want you to understand something tonight. Uh, God says this, uh, before the day was, uh, I am friend, uh, before there ever was a Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, before the sun ever shone, uh, amen, there was a God uh, in heaven. Uh, and when the sun is no more, uh, thou still be a God. Uh, somebody ought to give God a shout of praise. Come on, give him praise tonight. Woo. Listen to this. Amen. Go back to verse 12. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Yea, before the day was, I am he. There's none that can deliver out of my hand. If God has got you in his hand tonight, there ain't a devil in hell uh, on this earth. Uh, or, uh, all the devils of hell uh, can get you out of the hand uh, of an almighty God. Uh, the storms may rage, uh, but my God, uh, he said you can't. Uh, he said and I will work, uh, and who will let? Uh, that word let means to hinder or prevent. Uh, if God is in the situation, uh, brother, nothing can stop the will of God in your life. I know you already know this, but I just want to affirm it to you. We go into 22. I preached last Sunday night, me and Brother Michael. That old spirit of this curtain will attach itself to you. It'll drain every bit of life out of you. Amen. It'll tell you everything I ever lie in the book. But God's still good. Somebody shout, God is still good. Amen. Listen to me, folks. Uh, even when Nineveh was a wicked city, uh, but God said, uh, their heart don't know me. They can't discern right from wrong. Uh, but if somebody preaches to them, uh, it'll touch their lives. And Jonah didn't want to go down there. He didn't want them to change. He wanted God to burn them up. 
Jonah got mad at God because God didn't do it. He said, God, I know you'd do this. I know you'd have mercy. I know I knew it. That's the reason they didn't want to come. They were, they, they were terrorists. Amen. They, they were torturers. Amen. They, 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 they were people that hated the children of God. They, they made havoc of them. They would come and steal them. They would raid their lands. Uh, and Jonah didn't want to go down and preach. Uh, but God, amen, God said, Jonah, go down and tell them people, uh, amen, in 40 days, uh, I'm going to overthrow this place. Uh, and it's, go, amen, it's over. Uh, and brother, uh, and when the king heard it, uh, the king even declared uh, it touched his heart. There's some about the word of God. It's powerful. It's a Alive. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. And friend, tonight, speak the word in your life. It's alive. It's powerful tonight. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. Woo. This omnipotent God that we serve tonight. God said, before the day was, I'm he. Isaiah 14, 27. We're going to just go a couple places here tonight just to show you. Hallelujah. Isaiah 14, Mm, somebody shout hallelujah, verse 27, hallelujah, for the Lord of hosts has purposed, when God purposes something, there's many people try to change, the the thwart or, or to abort the purposes of God, but you can't stop God, nobody, listen, there ain't a government that can put God in a box. They might try to restrain me and hinder me, but they can't stop God. <laughs> My God, that ought to make every one of y'all want to shout. Don't whine and dine in your situation. Get up and praise God with my breath. I'm going to thank him uh, that he's touched the situation in my life. The devil loves you to whine and dine with him. For the, the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who shall disannul it? Who can cancel Cancel out the purpose of God. Well, I'll tell you, there was a man that tried it. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. He said, everybody's going to bow to me. Three boys said, no, not me. Not us. He said, we'll put you in the fire. We won't just put you in the fire. We're going to heat that thing seven times hotter. We're going to make you crispy, not just burned. We're going to make you crispy. And Nebuchadnezzar said this, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? He's getting in, getting ready to get introduced to the great I am. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. You in a place tonight that, amen, you can tell the devil, devil, you getting introduced uh, to a God that can't fail me, uh, that won't leave me, uh, nor forsake me. Uh, fire can't burn it. Uh, lions can't eat it. Uh, and the devil can't stop it. Uh, by the power uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, that ought to make somebody want to shout. Uh, hallelujah. Who shall disnull it? Uh, his hand is stretched out. Who can stop the hand uh, of God? Uh, nobody can. So in your life tonight, in your situation, it's not hopeless. It's not out of reach. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. God's hand is not short that it can't save. God can reach way beyond your circumstance. Do you know what your problem is to God? A deliverance to show himself strong in. A preacher, I got everybody in the world against me. God be for you. Now, that don't make it, listen. Now, there's people that have tried to, amen, stop the purpose of God in my life before. Now, they can try to hinder me, and they may try to hinder for a few days, but they can't stop it. They can't stop the purpose and the will of God in my life. Amen. I will come out on the other side saying, look what the Lord has done. When that old king Nebuchadnezzar went back down there, he said, did we not cast three in there? Uh, Amen. Unless something's wrong. Uh, Amen. I see four down there uh, and the fourth is like the son of God. Uh, I want you to know something tonight. Uh, Somebody ought to shout, uh, amen, the devil can't stop uh, what God started in my life. You're not here by accident at Solid Rock. God didn't purpose in your heart to come to this church for no, for nothing. Amen. God's got a plan for your life. Will you understand it or not? Young man, Timothy, God's got a plan for your life. Matt, God's got a plan for your life. Now, you agreed with me a while ago when I told you before church. I said, man, you, I ain't seen him in a while. I said, you're still good looking as ever. He agreed with me 100%. 
No arguments out of that. Somebody shout amen. God's good. God's got in control, sis. He really does. Amen. Now listen, folks. You can stand in that gap and make up that hedge. When they're going the wrong way and God sent an angel by to stop it. You believe that? I know that. Amen. Let me tell you something. It bears repeating. Amen. And I, I'm, I'm blessed with the Lord tonight. But when that man, when we had that wreck, and that man pulled in behind us, it was not a man, it was an angel because of what I seen, what I knew about it. Amen. Amen. He was there to protect. And the moment everything was over, he just, just pulled out behind me and just gone. Nothing. I don't know if I believe that or not. It really doesn't matter. I don't mean that disrespectfully. Amen. It was, I seen it myself and I knew. I knew about God. God sent his angel and kept it that it had to happen a certain way instead of killing us. Amen. Now, everything don't work out for me the way I want it to work out. But I know one thing. If I walk in the plan of God, God will fulfill his purpose. Joseph was to go to Egypt for a reason, amen, because God had a plan and a purpose down there. Amen. There were 70 people that would starve to death called the children of Israel, amen, the sons of Jacob, amen. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. That was going to be the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. And God had a plan, and God said, I've got to send a man down there. It didn't look like he was in the will of God. Every time he turned around, something bad was happening. I mean, this guy, if it wasn't for bad luck, he wouldn't have no luck at all. But he wasn't having luck. He was in the providence of God. Do you realize that God knew you and knew what you would be before you was ever formed in your mother's womb? Before you had a daddy, before you had a mama, God doesn't know how to plan for you. Before you had grandparents and great-grandparents and all the way back, God had a plan for you. God knew your name. He knows my name. He knows my name. I don't know if y'all heard that story on, 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 on WTHL or not. Amen. Well, they were singing a song. Amen. He knows my name. And a missionary jumped up and said, y'all don't understand what that song's about. Amen. He said, we were, we, we were uh, uh, there being missionaries. He said, and we, we was driving down the road, and, and we see these men sit on, sit on the side of the road with masks and AK-47s. Uh, he said, they stopped us. Uh, amen. They shot the people in the car in front of them uh, and the one in front of them. Uh, and all of a sudden, the, amen, I think the police maybe got in. They got into a, a raging war. I believe he said for 14 hours they laid in the ditch. Bullets are flying but there was a song saying uh, he knows my name. Uh, amen. In the midst of torment. Uh, God knows where you at. Uh, if you lying in a ditch uh, and bullets are flying, God knows where you at. Uh, if you, amen, got your last breath, uh, God still knows uh, where you at. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Uh, God uh, knows where you at tonight. Uh, God knows how you feel uh, and God says just trust me. Uh, just believe me. Uh, just hope Hold on to me. I'll bring you through. I'll bring you out. And the sun will shine on the other side. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise tonight. Genesis 18 and 14, Daniel. Amen. I want you to understand some things tonight. Tell your neighbors, hey, are you getting this? God is in control of your life. Now, I make certain decisions. As long as I walk in the plan of God and not disobedient, I have the direction and the safety of God. Even if there's something wrong, if something's going on, if I don't understand, as I told you this morning, if I add it all up, it doesn't make sense. I don't have all the picture. But God does. One day, one day, after 13 years of heartache and sorrow and being lied on and being mistreated and being put in jail, Joseph was serving a life sentence without parole. He could never get out of prison. He was going to, sp- he was going to die in that filthy jail or a cave. It was a, it was a stink. They didn't have bathrooms. They didn't have running water. They didn't have showers. They didn't give you a jumpsuit. Your clothes rotted off of you unless you took them off the dead one that died before. They don't in the corner. Sounds like something encouraging, doesn't it? And they put Joseph in chains till his ankles swelled around the chains. And the iron came into his soul. It got into his spirit. 
And then I read this scripture that don't make sense. And God was with him. How can you say God's with a man like that? If he had told you, but God, there aren't them chains and serving a life sinners, and he would say, well, God's still with me. How many of y'all would have believed him? <laughs> Joseph, it just don't make sense, boy. It don't add up. But that was a day that God visited Pharaoh and gave him a troubling dream, and he couldn't figure it out. He saw seven full ears of corn, amen, mighty and blessed. He saw seven ears, amen, of corn that was mildew, and it had been through a, 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 a famine, and it was, amen, and it overcame those seven good ears, amen, and you, you couldn't tell it, amen. There were seven fat cows, and those cows were just gorgeous cows, and there were seven skinny, scrawny cows, and they ate the, the good cows, and you couldn't tell no difference in them. And Pharaoh couldn't figure that out. All these musicians, all the astrologers, all the dreamers that interpret, all the magicians could not interpret that dream. But before that happened, there was a butler and a baker down there in a prison that Pharaoh had got angry with and put him in prison. And one of them had a dream. He dreamt, amen, that his cup was restored to him. And Joseph said, your cup you're going to go back and be a servant back to Pharaoh again. Well, the, the baker got all excited. He thought, well, Mo, that's a good dream of his. Hey, man, I got one. He had, he had a lot of fish and chips in there. And the birds came and picked at it. Joseph said, you don't gonna like your dream, boy. The, you're going to be hung. You're not going to live. Happened just like he said it. And the butler went back out. And Joseph said, please don't forget me. And he forgot him. But folks, don't blame some people. It just wasn't time. Y'all hear me tonight? Huh? See, I'm not going to leave this world till it's my time as long as I walk in the will of God. God, give me days and I'm going to fulfill the days. And if I walk upright, I've got a promise that them days can be extended. Amen, Brother Wayne. That's a, that's a promise from God. Why do some people die early? I don't have all the answers. I ain't, I, no, call that I can't, I can't do that. I can't give you the full total. But God knows best. He said, Butler, remember me when you get back to Pharaoh and tell him about the situation I'm in. And the butler forgot. Then, Jason, then the Pharaoh had a dream. Y'all know the story well. And everything began to happen. Amen. And all of a sudden, the butler said, wait just a minute. I know a guy down there in jail. Uh, amen. When you put me in jail, Pharaoh, uh, and he told me my dream, and it came to pass and all this. Uh, amen. And they said, go get him. I want you to understand one thing. Thirteen years had come and gone. Uh, but amen, God had a plan and a purpose. Uh, somebody ought to raise your hands uh, and shout, God still got a plan. It may be tomorrow. It may be next week. Uh, it may be next month. Uh, it may be next year, uh, but I'm telling you, uh, this church is here uh, by the word of the Lord. Uh, Solid Rock Church uh, was built on a prophetic word uh, that a man of God uh, had seen through the spirit uh, and was dead uh, and in the grave, uh, but God uh, did not forget uh, what he had spoken. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and this church, uh, you said uh, in the promise uh, of God tonight. Uh, well, somebody ought to shout yes. I had people tell me I couldn't, we couldn't do it. But by the grace of God, it happened. They said we didn't have enough money. It wasn't enough of us. Uh, and there was nobody wealthy. But God put meal in your barrel. Uh, God put oil in your cruise. Uh, and we got it done. That's the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness in this house? Come on, give God a shout of witness in here. They shaved, they shaved Joseph, cleaned him up, put royal robes on him. Because you couldn't go and see the king just anyway. You had to be presented a certain way. And Joseph walked in there, and Pharaoh told him a dream. Y'all know that story better than I do probably. He 
He said, you're going to have Pharaoh. Egypt is going to be so blessed for seven years that bountifulness will be beyond understanding for there's coming a famine. And those years of famine will erase every good thing that ever was. You need to seek a man out that's got wisdom and understanding and appoint him to prepare for this. Pharaoh said, I'm looking at him. You're the man. And he called his name Zephyr. Zephaniah, say it to me. Zephaniah. Now, like I said, it, we're going to do it again. <laughs> Thank you. Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Is that it? <laughs> and put a ring on his finger. And said, Joseph. I'm only more in authority than you on the throne. I'm not going to worry about it. It's all in your charge. And a man went from nobody, from a nothing. From a man that his name had been forgotten. But God give a 17-year-old boy a dream. That the sun, the moon, and the she's would bow. And the stars. And it happened when them boys come into Egypt, Joseph's brothers, when they said, we'll never bow, we'll never be your servant. But they did obeisance. They humbled themselves before the great Zephaniah. Amen. And Joseph knew them, but they didn't know Joseph. My God, somebody, you never know what God has in plan for you. I never dreamt that you'd ever be at this church. I didn't even know you, so I just wouldn't dream about you. But we pray for people like you all the time, that God would send you. And I believe in the providence of God that God worked that out, that somebody came along your way. Amen. I never thought I'd have a Joe in church, but we got one. Somebody shout amen. And Brother Jason Akers preached the other night about Bob. I don't know who Bob is, uh, but Bob don't have what we got. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. I'm sorry for the Bobs tonight. Somebody, Y'all remember him saying that? He said, we got it. Bob don't have it, but we got it. <laughs> but God's still good. <laughs> we give him a pretty good way to go over Bob. Somebody shout amen. God is good. Somebody shout amen. amen. I've done the same thing, so no big deal. Amen. But see, God knows your plan. God knows a plan for you tonight. God has a plan for you. Janelle, you never no, you never thought you'd ever been in a church like this, would you? Oh. Hey, ten years ago, if somebody told you that, you'd call them a liar. And married to a handsome guy like that, you'd have never believed it, would you? <laughs> I got one old cheap on my side tonight. Somebody shout hallelujah. But that's the goodness of an almighty God. Can I get a witness in this house tonight? Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? And Pharaoh, amen, amen, turned it all over to Joseph. And Joseph, amen, they stored up grain. They built grain houses. Uh, and they stored up and they stored up and they stored up and they stored up. Uh, and they stored up enough uh, that when the famine came, uh, it was like there was not a famine. Uh, there was a famine in the land of Canaan. Uh, but God had prepared. Uh, there were 70 people. Uh, the promised children of God, uh, the seed of Abraham, uh, would have died. Uh, but God promised Abraham uh, and Friend, uh, if God has to send you somewhere uh, you don't like for a while, uh, amen, you'll be blessed uh, in the end uh, because somebody has got to hear about this thing. Come on, give God a shout of praise in here. <laughs> almost done. I'm almost, I'm, I know how to stop now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Proverbs 21 and verse 30. Amen. Proverbs 21, verse 30. Listen to these scriptures. I just got a few of them. Amen. I couldn't write them all down. Proverbs, amen. 21, verse 30. There is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. You can't get no counsel against God. Satan's going to try to do that with leaders of this world. 
The heathens are raging. But you can't stop God. They can try to hem the church up, but the church will shine and burn on. You can burn our building, but you can't stop God. You can put me in chains, but you can't stop God. One man, I forgot his name, dear, and, and there, we, we saw the, uh, the, the drama on it. Amen. Amen. They asked him to quit preaching, or they commanded him to quit preaching. He said, I will not quit preaching. As long as I breath my body, I won't quit preaching. You know what they did to him? They didn't kill him. They cut his tongue out of his mouth. They cut his tongue out. You can't talk without a tongue. You can't, you can't swallow right without your tongue. And they thought they stopped him. But the conduct of his life and how he conducted himself won people to God because he would not, he couldn't utter words, but he could still preach with the language. You can't stop God. You can't stop him from delivering you when he wants to deliver you. No matter how many people's got you down, no matter how many devils against you, when God says enough is enough, he'll make a door and say, walk through it, son. You're coming out of this one. My God, that makes me want to shout hallelujah right there. Amen. One day I was backing out of my drive right down to where Randy and Carla live tonight. Man, I had, well, I had bills stacked that high. Right near that high. Didn't know how I was going to pay them. They had no money. We was, we, we, we was just struggling. I was back at my drive. I said, oh, God, it's up to you. This is the God's truth. Before nighttime came, I had enough money to pay every one of my bills. That's how God does things. When God speaks to a little Baptist pastor's wife, driving home from Fruit of the Loom, Union Underwear, we called it in Campbellsville, and she's coming across her Green River Bridge, and she said, uh, they always call me Wayne Keith. Wayne Keith, Wayne Keith, I was Wayne Keith, amen. She said, Wayne Keith, God told me to come here and start paying my tithes and give them to you. She wrote me a check out for $100, looked like a 1000 Somebody shout amen. Here she come back two weeks later, another hundred and something dollars. And God met every need from a woman that could hear God crossing the Green River Bridge on Highway 55 North or South, South. Let me tell you, you can't stop God. I had a lady got mad at me about a week before that, and she said, you ain't getting no more ties from us. You shut the door and God will open too. You can't stop God. I didn't get angry. I didn't get upset. Amen. I felt bad. It grieved my spirit. Amen. I didn't know how we was going to make it, but God still had a way. Let me tell you something. Without me, God will make a way. Without you, God will make a way. Amen. God wants to use me. God is pleased to take care of me. But if I don't want to do it, God will get somebody else. Amen. Amen. Give me just a moment here. I don't know where all I'm going to. Go, to. go to Psalms 33, verse 10. Amen. I'm going to stop here in about 20 minutes. Somebody shout amen. Oh, God. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to what? And what that heathen is, is not a bunch of people that, that can't, that just acts crazy. These are people, the heathen is those that do not know God. They think they do, and they say, we can stop this God because he ain't no greater than our God is. See, Brother Michael preached a part of it the other night when Ben-Ahad, when Ben-Ahadad and the children of Israel whooped them, and they went back and they said, in a year we're going to come back again. And they said, they're the God of, he's the God of the hills, not the God of the valley. Let me tell you something. He's not the God of the hills. He's not the God of the valley. He's God everywhere. Or he ain't God just other hills or the valley. He's God everywhere. So it don't matter where you run into God at, he's still God. He's God in the fire. He's God in the lion's den. 
Let me tell you, amen, there was, a, amen, some guys, 120 of them, amen, that thought they could get rid of Daniel, but they couldn't get rid of Daniel because God didn't have one time to him to go. Daniel was somewhere around 80 years old when they put him in a den of lions and they thought he would not be there in the morning. But that old king somehow said, Daniel, uh, has your God delivered you? Uh, and there was a voice that came out and said, yes, uh, the God that I serve has shut the lion's mouth. God knows how to shut lions' mouths. My God, when I got this and God began to talk to me about this, I got all excited. I couldn't wait to come and preach this. Amen. Psalms 33. The Lord make the counsel of the heathen. To, no, he maketh the devices of the people of what? Now, I don't know if some of y'all been fighting something, somebody coming against you, trying to stop you. Don't worry about it. We need to put our fears aside. That, amen. God's in control of this thing. I will live till I die. <laughs> and I'm going to enjoy my days. I ain't going to sit around and ring my hand. I could die tomorrow. I'm just going to enjoy that this is the day the Lord has made. He gave it to me. Let me enjoy it. But what if you get COVID? What if I don't? Amen. I'm not being critical. I'm just saying, amen. Why worry about something you don't even have? Hello? Now, I, I, I want to be wise. I, I'm not going to be, uh, amen, uh, 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 without understanding. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit around and worry about it. If I go to sleep tonight and I don't get up, amen, I just woke up in heaven. Amen. Enjoy the goodness of God. Amen. Weary and torment is of the devil. Oh, I, 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 I'm just tormented. Amen. I, I, I've been there. And I have to settle some things. Sink or swim, I'm gone. Got my mind made up. Ain't going to turn back. I've had, everything, I've had all kinds of devices against me. And Satan thought he had me. He done picked out my plot. He done had me a gravestone or a tombstone there. Said, I got him this time. But God in his mercies parted the water and I walked through it. By the grace. Is this good to anybody here besides me tonight? Huh? Amen. God's good. I seen the night that God came to Jason Acres sitting in that seat at Rowena. Powerful. I remember the night that Jonathan Mann walked in church. He'd been fishing. And when he passed the church, something got a hold of him. He took his boat home, dropped it, come back to church and repented and got saved. That's the goodness of God. You still can't pass that church down without remembering what God did for Rowena people. Amen. Hallelujah. God's good. Somebody shout he's good. Can't ever get away from that, can you? Amen. Can I preach another five minutes? Hallelujah. Next verse, Daniel. Amen. Next verse. Blessed is the nation. Let me tell you something. A nation that will acknowledge God is sovereign in our lives. We'll be a blessed people. When our president thinks he can do it without God, he's a failure. When our Congress and our senator, I don't care if he's a Republican or Democrat, any man that thinks he can do it without God is a failure. Yeah. Amen. Blessed, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Amen. Amen. Give me, amen. Go to Acts. Oh, my God, there's still more to go. <laughs> Somebody shout. Go to, oh, I won't go here. Go to Genesis 18 and 14. So I told you I got 150 scriptures, but I ain't going to read them all. Genesis 18, 14. Read that. Read that, everybody. Come on, read that. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything. A 90-year-old woman can't have a baby. With God, she can <laughs> Some of you ladies, you got hope. <laughs> Do you feel that bounce around all over the building? <laughs> got nervous, didn't you? Boy, he started twinkling his thumb, twiddling his thumb. <laughs> Is anything too hard for God? <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Don't run off, Seth. <laughs> Oh, 
One, two, three, four, number five on the way. God, he won't come back. <laughs> oh, God. Could you imagine Wednesday night, Brother Ronnie getting up here and said, Folks, I got some more news. I didn't fall no more, but I got something else to tell you, folks. <laughs> now, that's the way Sarah felt. That's the way Sarah felt when God said she would have a baby. Sarah said, <laughs> That's absurd. That can't happen. God said, is anything too hard? Abraham's 100 years old. That man's 100 years old. <laughs> that ought to make you nervous. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. God is still able. Somebody shout God's still able. I'll bless y'all. Sister Jean and I know. Amen. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. Tell your neighbors, is anything too hard for God? <laughs> amen. Go to Jeremiah 32 and verse 27. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that Brother Jason Akers, I got to tell him when he gets, he's probably watching me anyhow. He didn't name his boy Bob. <laughs> Sister Rhonda, that had been terrible, wasn't it? Hallelujah. Look at this. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard? Is there anything too hard for God? Amen. Let's, let's, let's take some of our wearies and just throw them on Him. Let's take some of this that we've been fretful over and just cast it on Him and enjoy the goodness of God. Had a mother that had three children and she's all the time been tormented that she's going to die. She couldn't even raise her children. She was 29 years old. And she couldn't raise her children. She had nervous breakdown after nervous breakdown. That's what old, the old folks used to call it. Now we call it anxiety and depression. But it used to be nervous breakdowns. And she all the time would smell funeral home flowers. You know how it smells in a funeral home. It's got a distinct odor. And she was all the time smelling them, them smells. And we prayed for that lady. She had three children. And most of the time, them children was raising theirself because mama could not function because of that tormenting spirit. The devil will do that. He'll rob you of your life. He'll rob you of your life. Amen. I remember when Jeannie got her license, you know, and I started to think, oh, my God, I got real concerned because she, she was an excellent driver. Jeannie could drive excellent. But in my opinion, when I'm on the, on the passenger side and Jeannie has not got that foot on the brake, she's still going 55, and that guy's eaching out there. She said, Daddy, it won't be my fault. <laughs> someone, someone like, oh, my God. Jeannie, she's actually never, never had an accident that I know of. She'd been, she'd been very fortunate and very blessed. But man, whew, somebody shout amen. Then she started driving to school by her uh, college. I said, God, this is in your hands. I can't, I can't get up every morning and talk, wear myself for an hour and a half and wear myself sick her coming home. Now Isaac's got his license. Oh, God, it's a same, it's a rerun. Somebody shout amen. He made a hundred on his driving test. Didn't do nothing wrong. She gave, she gave him a hundred. I'm an expert driver and I didn't make that. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. Well, I thought it was anyhow. Somebody shout Amen. Richard Petty didn't have nothing on me. But anyhow, listen, what am I going to do with Isaac? Am I going to worry myself sick? Or is he going to say, God, he's in your hands. Give him wisdom. Give him understanding. God, let him to listen. 
Don't let it be prideful that he can't receive instruction. You want to be blessed, girls? Listen sometimes. It don't sound good, but make you it'll make you wise. Timothy, listen sometimes. Help you out. Amen. The other day he said, I don't think I can do it now. I can take you. I said, ain't no way, old buddy. You're still a boy. Oh, he's stout as a bull. But I'm a bull, I'm a man and a half. Sorry. Somebody said. Huh? He'll feel better, won't he? Thank you, Brother Sean. Well, I'm almost done. Go to Acts chapter 5 and I'm done. Get ready to come to music. The disciples were whipped and beaten. And they commanded them, say, do not teach anymore in this name. Now, the devil don't care how religious you are. He don't want you to talk about the name. Because that name is all power in it. It's the only name that will save you tonight. Listen to me. If you're a lost person in this building... Only God can save you. The name of Jesus is the only name that can save you tonight. Amen. God's a mighty good God. How many believes that tonight? And they put the disciples in prison. And God sent an angel and opened the prison doors and said, go speak the words of life in the temple. They sent for them boys to come. They go, the council was going to scold them again. They said, they're not there. They're down there in the temple preaching. And they brought them back and they threatened them again. But there was a man in that crowd that said this. His name was Gamaliel. He was a doctor of the law. He was a very reputable man. He had a man of great reputation that people listened to. He said, I want to tell you something. There was a guy before him named Judas. There was a guy by the name of him before Thaddeus. And they all rose up thinking themselves something great. And they went out and they, got, they all got to burst and it all fell apart. But these disciples, if they've got God on their side, if this thing be of God, you can't overthrow it. If it be of God, you can't fight against God and win. How many believes that tonight? How many glad that you're on the winning side tonight? Give a hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise tonight. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. How many's on the winning side tonight? You may be in a valley of despair, but you're on the winning side tonight. You may feel like it's you in the dungeon with Joseph, but you're on the winning side tonight. You may feel like everybody's forgot about you, but you're on the winning side tonight. Somebody give God one more shout of praise in here tonight. How be glad tonight. How be glad tonight. Uh, amen. That you're on the winning side. Come on, stand to your feet and give God a shout of praise tonight. Come on, let's give him a shout of praise. We're on the winning side tonight. Everything we have is lost, but we have the treasure in this earthly vessel. We're still on the winning side. Not that I wouldn't weep, not that I wouldn't feel bad that I lost maybe my vehicles, my home, little treasured things that I have, but I'm on the winning side tonight. How many glad that you're on the winning side? How many glad you're on the winning side tonight? How many knows if God be for you, who can be against you? Can I get a witness in here one more time? How many tonight can raise your hand and say, I know that God is in control of my life. Yes, yes, yes. That nothing can happen to me that God does not first approve. Let me believe that tonight. I may not like it. I may shed tears. Paul died with stripes on his back. He had hundreds of stripes on his back. But he died on the winning side. They beat him with rods. He was shipwrecked. But he died a winner. Because he, God said, you're going to Rome and you're going to preach it to Rome. You're going to preach it before the king. He stood before Nero and witnessed to him what God had done for him. King Agrippa got it. Folks, when God says something, he means it. Amen. Now if you've been tired of struggling through life and you're wondering, is there anything more powerful than my troubles and trials? 
Well, I got news for you. You can come on over to the Jesus side and you can rest. I want you tonight to raise your hand and say, God, I need a rest. I need a rest in my spirit. I need a rest in my soul. I need a rest in my mind tonight. There are some folks here that need that right now. There are some folks here tonight that you've been fighting sicknesses and the devil tells you you're going to die. He tries to cause you not to have a, never a good day. But you are. Come on, somebody praise him right now. I feel the hand of God. Father, right now, for those that are battling infirmities and the devil's doing everything he can to hinder them, put a hindrance against those infirmities. God, let their bodies have a rest in the name of Jesus. Those that minds cannot rest of a night, God, put a restraint in order against the devil for your mind to be safe tonight. God, of those that are lost in this building, God, if they'd realize they need you and they can't make it without you, no matter how strong, how, how much ability they have, they need you in their life tonight. Father, we thank you for your goodness right now. God, of those, it seemed like one thing after another. But tonight, God, let the strength of God give them the strength to raise their hands and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, reach out to him right now. Now, if you've been tired of losing life's war and you're searching for something worth fighting for, we'll join this army. It's been proved and tried. Oh, yeah. So come on over to the winning. Well, come on over to the winning side. Now we'll follow with Jesus. We got a banner he'll Well, we got some mighty army. We won't be denied. We'll come on over. Do the winning. Brother Sean was called to work tonight. He couldn't get here. You walk out there for you and Brother Sean both tonight. Brother Keith, just walk with him, buddy, because we're on the winning side tonight. How are y'all on the winning side tonight? We'll come on over. Come on over. To the winning side.
victory showing the devil amen that we've got that victory that we've been bought by the blood of Jesus Come on. we are the righteousness of God tonight yes. some of you that amen your body has been killing you uh, you want to walk down this front and say devil I'm going to walk out of this thing uh, some of you that's got mind problems uh, and the devil been tormenting you walk down there and say devil I'm going to walk down this valley I'm going to lift my hands uh, and praise the Lord understand one thing he's sovereign and when there was no way out he made a way out he made 